Camellia Safe Eye Creams. Do you have these little white pearls around your eyes or on your temples? Or do you know someone who does? These could be milia or a milium. And of course you need to get this diagnosed by a doctor or dermatologist, but what are these? And why does it seem like certain eye creams or face products make them worse? Today, your acne big sister, a medical esthetician who has actually had a couple of these on my eyes and ears myself, I'm going to break down what milia is, what we know about products contributing to milia, what to actually look for in eye creams or face creams if you want to avoid any milia triggers, and the different types of eye creams that actually work for specific eye conditions that don't trigger these little pearls of dead keratin and skin cell buildup. We are breaking it down, and I have three of the best products that actually work as based on science. As you know, I am not a huge fan of eye creams. We've spoken about this before. Most eye creams for most brands are just overpriced moisturizers. They put them in these tiny tubes and you could literally use them all over your face, which, <laughs> hint, hint, I actually do, specifically with one of these from Beauty of Josen, who we're working with on a portion of this video. But when it comes to eye creams, there are some people who want to use them, especially if you are more prone to milia, these little white pearls that kind of show up around this eye area. You may have noticed that putting your moisturizer or an occlusive oil or an occlusive petrolatum product close to the eyes on your face actually makes the milia worse. Or if you're trying to use products underneath makeup, sometimes certain skin products pill. And there are reasons to use eye creams if you know what to look for. And if you're actually getting things that have ingredients that are going to work for your specific condition, because wrinkles are very different than color, which are very different than bags, and all three of those need a different solution. And then if you can actually find something that's worth the price so that yes, you can put it under your eyes or everywhere else on your face if you really like what they've got going on in here. Before I share with you the three different eye creams that work on these three different conditions that are actually milia safe, you have to understand what milia are. Milia plural, or a milium, is basically this little keratin cyst that balls up very close to but underneath the skin. Keratin is what our hair and our nails and our skin is made up of. Our keratinocytes are literally keratin skin cells. But sometimes in the body, things can go a little haywire. And for reasons that we don't totally know, these tiny little cysts, these little pearls, these little balls of keratin can form under the skin. Now, sometimes people think that these are whiteheads or acne, but they are are very different. Specifically, acne is caused by bacteria and happens within a hair follicle, one of your pores, whereas milia doesn't always happen in or near a hair follicle. And on top of that, it usually doesn't have the pus or the inflammation that is associated with acne. That's why they are these little white bumps under the skin that don't come out when you press on them, which you shouldn't be trying to pick at them anyways. But acne, on the other hand, is a little bit more eruptive and tends to get more red. Now, milia does need to be diagnosed and treated by a doctor or dermatologist or somebody working with them. If you come to a derm clinic, milia or a milium is going to be lanced with like a tiny little pokey pokey and it's going to be kind of popped and extracted out. There are some Dr. Pimple Popper videos that are um, very, very exciting if you actually want to watch some of the extractions in action. And although milia are normally extracted or treated in a professional setting, sometimes they do kind of resolve and kind of disappear on their own. And there are over-the-counter products that can actually help. But the biggest thing you want to know is not which AHAs or retinoids can kind of help get rid of them, but we want to understand how to prevent them in the first place. And the sad, hard truth that I'm going to serve to you, no BS, is that that isn't always possible. But we do know that there are certain triggers for milia that seem to kind of show up, because we don't actually know what causes these. For most people, they happen around the eyes or the temples. I personally have even gotten them on the back of my ears for some reason. Some professionals believe that it's due to sun exposure, which is another reason to wear your SPF. Other believe it's due to an issue with desquamation. Desquamation is your skin's natural process of exfoliation. And if your skin cells aren't turning over enough, maybe there's little balls of keratin, this protein that's stuck in the skin. So that could also be a contributing factor. For some people, it seems that the skin may also be reacting to trauma. For example, if you have scarring, if you have a really abrasive sort of procedure done, if there's abrasion on the skin or an intense chemical peel, there have been some medical studies showing that milia can show up as a result of that. But by far, the most common thing that I hear about or that people come to ask me about are actual products causing or triggering milia. And it is wrong to say that a specific product causes milia, because if that were the truth, then every single person who used that product would get milia. You see what I'm saying? But at the same time, there are some very
very occlusive products, some very thick moisturizers, some like La Mer that are very expensive that actually make the issue worse for some people. And if you believe that you're one of those people or if you know somebody who is, this video is for you or for you to send to them. And these are the things that you want to avoid. Some of the ingredients that you probably want to avoid are things like petrolatum or paraffin, anything that has petrolatum jelly, this Vaseline. For people with eczema or psoriasis, this can be a great ingredient, but you may want to avoid it around the eye area. And especially things like mineral oil or even olive oil, some people have said triggered their melia. And if you have anything really thick in this area and you notice that you're kind of prone to some of these bumps, try avoiding those products. Or if you are using a moisturizer as an eye cream, but your moisturizer is super thick, try avoiding it on this area of the face and look for something else instead. And when you are looking for something else, here is my list of criteria, what I look for in a milia safe eye cream when I'm trying to recommend things to others. The first is that I am looking for an eye cream and not a patch. I love patches for under eye bags, but this video is not about my favorite patches. We're talking about the creams today. I want something that doesn't gum up or pill up under makeup. If it's gonna cause creasing and streaking, uh, we don't want it. I wanna look for something that's not overly suffocating, something that is lightweight, that is hydrating, but that doesn't like get all goopy and gunky on the skin. And most importantly, we want ingredients that actually work. If we're spending money on a dedicated eye cream for this area, you best believe it's got to be putting in the hours. It has to be making the effort, which brings us to brah, the age old issue that I have with the cosmetic industry of different eye concerns needing different treatments. Take a look at wrinkles. They are literal wrinkles in the skin that usually have to do with sun damage and collagen degradation. Wrinkles are completely different than under eye pigmentation, than purpleness, than these blood vessels showing through the skin. And those blood vessels in that brown or purple color is completely different than a puffy under eye area, than those under eye bags that we get when we wake up in the morning and our face is puffy. And if there are three different things, we need three different solutions. And yes, I have scoured, I have buyed, I have tried, I have wasted so much money on eye creams trying to find some decent ones. And I have actually found three, one for each of these different concerns. And one of them is literally under 20 bucks. One of them is just above 30. And then the other one is more expensive, but we do have some budget options just in case you wanna look for those. So let's start out with my personal favorite that yes, is not only in my routine as an eye cream, but I've been using this all over my face. I use it on my dynamic forehead wrinkles. I use it on my marionette lines, AKA the nasal labial folds and all over my face because this has retinaldehyde. This is from Korea and this is the Beauty of Joseon Revive Eye Serum with ginseng and retinol. This is retinol with A-L, not O-L. If we remember back to biochemistry, retinoids are known as the gold standard in dermatology. They were originally created for acne, but people found out they were great for fine lines and wrinkles, and then for scars, and then even for things like hyperpigmentation, and yes, even for the eye area. But there are different strengths of retinoids. The word retinoid is like an umbrella term, and it relates to all of these vitamin A's. But underneath it, you have things like retinol, which is very gentle and over-the-counter. You have retinol, which retinol turns itself into retinol. And then this retinol is what becomes retinoic acid, the bioavailable form that binds to our skin cells and literally causes our skin to create more cells in that basal layer. Retinoids are phenomenal, especially if you are struggling with fine lines and wrinkles. And yes, this also includes around the eye area. Now, if you've ever watched Dr. Shereen Idris or myself or other people online or spoken to your dermatologist, they've probably told you that yes, you can use your full strength tretinoin around the eye area, but a lot of doctors and derms recommend buffering it with something like Vaseline, AKA this petrolatum jelly. Now, while that is wonderful, Wonderful. If you're prone to melia, this is a f***ing disaster. Or if you have sensitive eye skin, this is a disaster. And the reason why is because this tretinoin full strength, this retinoic acid, it is good, but bitch, it is potent. And so it can burn and leave you with retinization, with redness and peeling and flaking all up in this eye area, which, you know, is um, not normally the look that we're going for. And then if we are using something like Vaseline or petrolatum jelly to buffer this retinoid, that is the exact thing that most people have said anecdotally. Hey, this triggers my milia and gives me all these little pearls underneath my eyes and I hate them and they won't go away. Well, exactly. So why would we contribute more to the problem when we could get something
something else within this retinoid family that doesn't cause that irritation, that isn't as bothersome, and that actually moisturizes and nourishes the skin without overly suffocating it. This is an extraordinarily plumping eye cream that does help with fine lines and wrinkles. And if you are worried about kind of aging in the under eye area, you need literally the smallest amount. And yes, you can put this right here on your under eyes. You can even put it a little bit above. And of course you can rub this all over the rest of your face, which is what I personally do. What I absolutely love about the beauty of Joe Sunline is that they actually mentioned that you can use this all over the face. They're very transparent about that. They're also vegan and cruelty free, which is very hard to find retinaldehyde that is vegan and cruelty free. And they're transparent about their ingredients, which this has more than just retinol. This also has ceramides, this also has niacinamide, and this also has ginseng, which acts as an antioxidant in here. My favorite ingredient in here is of course the retinaldehyde, and that is what works on the fine lines and the wrinkles. Those retinoids, when they are in the skin, literally help to boost EGF, epidermal growth factor. And they're basically helping your skin cells build up and build bigger deep down. So a lot of people think that retinoids are exfoliating. Not really, they can cause the outer layers of the skin to shut off a little bit faster because you're literally speeding up the skin cell turnover, but they're actually plumping up and making the inside of the skin thicker. And they're causing those layers to kind of juice up and even create and attract those glycosaminoglycans, which hyaluronic acid is one of them. And when you have all of this plumping, nourishing skin cell regeneration going on in here, that's going to help decrease the fine lines and wrinkles. It's going to help rebuild collagen and elastin and literally stimulate those fibroblasts, those beautiful little cells inside of your skin that create the collagen, the elastin, and the hyaluronic acid and say, hey, get to fucking work. And then they do. And then over a period of a few weeks of regular use, you start to see the under eyes look brighter. You start to see them look less wrinkled. You start to see them look a little bit less saggy and crinkly. And as a bonus in here, the ingredients such as the ceramides are nourishing, the ginseng and the niacinamide are also antioxidants. So they work to brighten the under eye area. And yes, this actually does work if you have darkness, a little bit of pigmentation in the under eye area too. But this is not my number one choice for pigmentation. This is my number one choice for wrinkles. This is what I personally use. And again, it's like $19. I've gone through multiple. Um, I kind of broke the lid. I'm eager. <laughs> I love her a lot. But if you are specifically struggling with hyperpigmentation, this is a great segue to talking about those purple or brown marks underneath or around the eyes. Now, what causes eye discoloration? There's actually a multitude of things, and this is why it can be hard. Number one, it could be smoking or drinking, if that's something that you do. And yes, we're even talking about the marijuanis. It could also be dehydration. We're talking topical dehydration because the skin isn't moisturized enough, or internal dehydration if you're not drinking your water, pushing your fluids like you know you're supposed to. Honey boo boo. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now what? Anemia or basically an iron deficiency can also contribute to this. If you do have thinning of the skin, especially in this area, it can actually cause the little blood vessels in here to show up more. However, if you are someone who struggles with actual hyperpigmentation or pigmentation around the eyes, vitamin C and other tyrosinase inhibitors can be phenomenal. This is one that is relatively new from Paula's Choice. And if you have any form of under eye discoloration or under eye darkness, of course, check your allergies, check your sleep, make sure that you don't have anemia, but also, so get yourself something with vitamin C. I do use many vitamin C face products up in my eye area, but if you want something that is melia safe, this doesn't have ingredients that are going to overly suffocate the eye area. And this actually has a very special form of vitamin C that really does help, that is potent, but that also doesn't really irritate the under eye area. This has a 5% vitamin C and it's specifically 3-O-ethyl ascorbic acid, which I believe is what's in the Kim Kardashian line for like 90 something dollars. Again, this is like 39 and then it goes on sale for like 30. Now there is also a brand new eye cream from Sierra's skincare line. It looks like that one is also made with vitamin C. That is actually of interest to me, but I haven't gotten my hands on it yet or tested it or tried it. But the ingredients in here I have. Now this also has a very special antioxidant as well as peptide blend. They specifically call out that it has zerum bone and I hope that I am pronouncing that correctly, but it's essentially an extract from ginger root and it's supposed to be super potent without being irritating. And antioxidants are wonderful especially when it comes to free radical damage. And while, you know, an eye cream or any face product is not going to erase the damage that is done by smoking or drinking, which yes, can have an impact on the skin. Smoking and drinking do cause changes to the skin based on a lot of free radical or reactive oxygen species damage that is inevitably caused by those substances to the body and to the skin. And using antioxidants either topically or orally by consuming them is a way to help prevent against or to fight against that. This has peptides as well, which can kind of strengthen and 
plump the eye area. Um, it also has rice bran, which is nice and hydrating. And that's what I like about this is that it's like a lightweight gel texture. So it's not overly suffocating. It's not like a thick cream. The formula is really beautiful. It's a good vitamin C. And if you struggle with pigmentation in this area and you don't wanna use something like a retinoid to fight the pigmentation, this one is it. Now, what if you do have the under eye bags, the puffiness? This can actually be one of the hardest ones to treat because of the causes of that puffiness. Sometimes they are things we don't have control over. Again, it can be things like allergies, smoking or drinking, sleeping on your face, which if you could train yourself to sleep on your back, maybe that would help. But the hardest thing is that sometimes under eye puffiness comes from what's called a hernia or a septal hernia. We basically have this tiny little septum under our eye and we have these natural little fatty pockets. But sometimes if there's a hernia, or if that weakens, it can kind of push out and push forward, giving us these kind of puffy under eye bags that don't go away for any reason. There is a very expensive but very effective product from a brand that actually focuses on creating products like sunscreen products for people with skin conditions. The problem is this tiny little bottle is like $94. Is it worth it? Absolutely. But I also have a $9 dupe if you want that. This is from Color Science. This is the Total Eye Firm and Repair Cream. And if you are looking to firm and repair. This is the best one that I know to do it. There is also that Peter Thomas Roth, but I don't think it's cruelty free. And that one's more cosmetic or like makeup. It kind of dehydrates the eye area and kind of slucks it away. This does that with different peptides without being overly dehydrating. And if your under eye puffiness is something that actually can be worked on with a topical cream, this is going to be the one to do it. This also has probably the firmest uh, texture of them all. It is a little bit more like a cream rather than a gel, but this actually soaks into the eye area really, really well. It doesn't pill up or ball up under makeup. And again, it doesn't have any of those ingredients that could trigger Melia. This has antioxidants and peptides, specifically peptides that can firm and and tighten and antioxidants, specifically caffeine, which can kind of constrict blood flow when applied topically, which actually causes this under eye area not to wake up or anything the way coffee does to your brain via adenosine receptors, but it does help to actually constrict blood flow. So that way any puffiness that is coming from those little capillaries, those tiny little blood vessels or any of this lymphatic fluid is kind of <laughs> slooped away. And this is also what I really love under eye patches for. I feel like patches are amazing, uh, but if you're not using under eye patches those like little push-up bras, this is going to be the next best thing. Now, if you do want a budget version, the Ordinary's Caffeine Eye Cream is really good. It has caffeine and EGCG, and it is a 10th of the price. So I wanna make sure that you have budget ones available. And I've actually used the Ordinary one and spoke to a plastic surgeon who specializes in blepharoplasty, basically eye and eyelid surgery, and actually tested that product out extensively. So watch that video if you wanna see what happened to my face. But if you are looking for something that works for the puffiness, again, look at those lifestyle factors. Try to see if you could sleep on your back, not your face. And either the total eye or the caffeine solution from the ordinary are going to be your best bets depending on how much you want to spend. Now, all of this comes with our mother disclaimer of SPF is your BFF. Again, even Melia may be related to sun exposure. So if we're not protecting ourselves from the sun, none of this matters. But if you are looking for eye creams that again, actually work, that work in the under eye area and that won't cause or trigger Melia for most people based on what we do know about these fun little epidermal cysts, these are the three that are going to be your best bet. Again, this one is relatively new to me. The color science and the ordinary ones I've known and used for over two years. And this one is relatively new, but I've gone through two bottles. This is my second one and I use this all over my face. And we know that K-Beauty is good, but the fact that this is inexpensive and effective and affordable, I f***ing love it. And again, a huge thanks to all of these brands for creating these products and a huge thanks to them for partnering with us on a portion of this video. When I first agreed to the partnership, I was first off so excited because I am testing and trying their sunscreen and oh, do I have updates for you on that. But number two, I was a little bit apprehensive about it because I was like, I love this product. I don't want people to assume that just because I've partnered with a brand that it's going to sway my opinion. And I want to assure you that it has not. And although I do take partnerships and sponsorships, which helps us give skincare and treats to our beautiful butterfly community members and the puppies and kittens and editors who help us create these amazing videos, brands like this really help this channel exist and thrive and survive to create this information for you for free. But this is also a phenomenal product based on the ingredients and how it has worked. And I have used it in my routine before I even considered a partnership. And then when the opportunity arose to speak about eye creams that aren't actually 
and to deal with these little pearls that can kind of appear under the skin? The answer was an immediate yes. And depending on what you need or what is happening in this under eye area, I want to make sure that you are equipped with the knowledge so that you can avoid the BS in the industry where all of these brands are just saying, oh, our eye cream is the best for everything. Just use it. Not even explaining which of these three conditions it works for. And I truly believe that knowledge is power. And if you understand the ingredients and how things work, you can turn and learn these, spend $19 on a vegan and cruelty-free K-beauty product and save yourself tons of money and get something that works for you. Or actually know if you are going to spend money, when it is actually worth it and what the budget version is if you want to spend $9 on the ordinary instead. As someone who struggled so much with my acne and who still does have, you know, a couple issues with my under eyes, it is very important to me and it's the information that I wish that I would have had when I was 16. So here is a grown up 16 year old me who's much older than 16 now talking to you, my honey bunches of oats, trying to help you out if you end up having these little pearls under the skin or if you know someone who does. All of the links are in the description. Make sure that you send this to someone who maybe has had this conversation with you or who is struggling with this and make sure that you get a diagnosis from a dermatologist to make sure it is actually Melia. Feel free to take some of these active ingredients to them and ask them their thoughts too. Because after all, this channel is my opinion soup and you are welcome to take a seat, sit down, grab a spoon and consume it with me or to completely look the other way. But regardless of which, I am so glad to have shared this skin intellectual meal with you. I hope that you stay hydrated both orally and topically, especially for some of those under eye issues. I love you and I cannot wait to see you in this next video. <laughs> love you guys. Bye.